Good morning, everybody. Uh, today, we're delighted to have uh, Gonzalo Ituriaga with us, Technical Director of Tempos Vega Sicilia. Gonzalo is going to take us through the wines of Pintia today. So, Gonzalo, thank you very much, and please, when you're ready. Well, thank you for having me here. Uh, please uh, ask me as many questions as you have, and I will try to answer. Pintia, Toro, different region, different expression of Tempranillo, different character, challenging region. For me, Pintia is located, uh, Toro, this is the Douro River that starts here in La Sierra de Manda. Here is the Ribera del Duero start here from here to here. Vega Sicilia is around here, okay? And Toro is 100 kilometers from, from, from Vega Sicilia. And if you keep going in Douro, here you find Alto Douro and Porto. So Toro is also in the Douro River, but completely different uh, climate and com different soils and, and completely different expression of Toro. This is Miguel. Miguel is one of our plots. For me, one of my favorites. Uh, year after year, this is one of the best ones. I love Miguel. Okay. This is always great. And here you can see the part, part, uh, particularities of the of, of, of these vines. It's only 1,000 vines per hectare uh, because it's quite draw, uh, dry if you compare to Rivera del Duero, and it's quite uh, warm if you compare to Rivera del Duero. So in in in, in the viticulturists of, of Pintia, it is really, really important the balance in the vine, the balance of the yield, because if you leave too small yields, you're going to overripe, but if you leave too much, the tannicities, the, uh, the tannins of the of the of the grapes are going to be too rustic. It's very important also to work this canopy to shadow the bunches. If the sun, uh, this is the west, this is the this is south, west, uh, 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 east, and west. Okay, este, oeste, north, uh, south. If the the sun that came from here, if it touches directly to the bunch, the bunch are going to burn. So it's very important to shadow and to for us cannot uh, working in goblet is the best way to do it to have more elegant wines. And one of the best or the key points is when to pick. Uh, when to pick the, the when to pick and, and when to harvest. I heard once from the winemaker of Seval uh, Seval Blanc. He said to me once that he loved to pick al dente, not too ripe, not too soon. In the just al dente, it's, for us, it's our philosophy. I share completely his philosophy, but for us, especially in this place in Toro, it's very important when to pick because if you leave uh, the, if you uh, wait two more days for the harvest, you can lose all your acidity. The berries can shrivel. So when the berries are uh, just ready to be picked, uh, you have to run and run and run. How we decide when to pick? We decide when to pick a uh, tasting, tasting and tasting. We analyze everything, but for us, tasting the grapes is the best way to, 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 to decide when to, uh, to pick, but also to decide what type of extraction you have to do, um, what uh, type of barrel you have to use. For us, it's a crucial moment. So that's in terms of uh, line management. In term, this is the type of typical Galet, Pierre Galet, like a little bit like in Chateauneuf du Pape, uh, with uh, sandy soil, but there is also clay uh, down and down in, in the soil. This is the winery. This is uh, the front of part of the winery. And this is the new facility we have since 2018. I think a lot of you have been in Vega Sicilia. But in, in Pintia, not everybody has been in, the, in Pintia. In Pintia in, in Pintia, in Alion, in 2018, we've changed all the reception uh, sorting table area, and we've changed all the wine making uh, building. Uh, so in here, in, in, this, in, the, in the case of Pintia, it's very important to, to fill the tanks by gravity. So you keep the pips inside the berry. When you keep the pips inside the berries, you you don't 
during the fermentation, you, you, don't, you don't do the extraction of the of the uh, of the tannicity of the of the pig. You just do the extraction of the tannicity of the skins, and it's very important to do it softly to, to be the more uh, entre uh, the most elegant wine uh, in Toro. Okay, that's why it's very important this uh, this tank with wheels. Okay, this is the new winery where we have a stainless steel and wooden bats. Uh, we increase the capacity of vinification because uh, thanks to United States and thanks to Switzerland, uh, Pinta is more and more a wine that a lot of people like. We are buying also 20 more hectares to keep uh, in another region that we don't have uh, grapes to give the wine more and more complexity. So we, we keep going and keep going. Okay. Gonzalo, just, just a quick question. The previous slide of the vineyard, can you tell me um, what, what time of year that photograph was taken? No, this is uh, quite soon in the season. This can be in nowadays. No, a little bit after, in May. Okay, May. thank you. We are here, we are the budding process here, here in, in Rivera and in Toro, the budding is quite late. Uh, for example, nowadays in Rivera del Duero, it's just budding. It's just, uh, and, in, and in Toro, we start budding 10 days ago. So uh, we are, that's why Tempranillo is, is a really short cycle. And um, since the budding until the, until the harvest is a really short cy uh, vegetative cycle. So this, uh, this photo can be taken in end of April. Okay, thank you. More or less, eh? So this is the new winery. Uh, we changed everything in 2018. Uh, so now we have everything to do uh, um, like we want. In 2015, the wine you are releasing, it was my first vintage, so I feel very proud of it. Uh, it was a, a vintage where we harvest very quickly. It was quite warm, but we run and run and run, and we harvest everything in nearly 12 days. Uh, because we have the capacity to do it. And, and for me, it was very important to, to do, a, a, we put, we, after we harvest, we put a, all the grapes in, in the boxes, in, in cooling chambers. And after the cooling chambers, we, we fill the tanks. And, and it's very important during the extraction to do a soft extraction, not to push it very much, because if not, you can take out the, the tannicity of the peaks. Uh, the, the rough tannicity. So it's very important to, to solve the tannicity. And in 2015, we also interpreted the year uh, trying to reduce the, the percentage of a uh, new oak because it was warm and we didn't want to give the, uh, we didn't want to, to make the wine too heavy. That's why we reduced to 80% the new oak. And we reduced also the malolactic percentage of, of, of of oak uh, in 20%. So all this it be, in, in order to try to make the wine more fresh and more uh, and more fine in in the in the feeling of the of the texture. Uh, I don't know what do you think about the 2015 Pintia? Have you tried? There was just a comment from Richard. I think Richard, if you want to come in on that, you could uh, give Gonzalo your comments. Richard? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Gonzalo, as you know, you were in Chicago here in February, and we had a few different tastings in a few different settings. And I myself, along with multiple, multiple, multiple people at those tastings, just thought the 15 vintage of Pintia was spectacular, the best one we've ever tasted. Hands down, not even a question. So bravo. No, oh, thank you. Thank you. It make me happy. <laughs> make me happy because I started in 2015. <laughs> Made us happy to drink it. <laughs> oh, it's, uh, I think it's very important when to pick. Uh, I mean, uh, the decision when to pick is a decision that we, it's, we take this decision between Enrique Macias, the guy who is in charge of the vines, and myself. And it's very important when to pick. And, and I think Enrique, he's really important in this decision. And then 
I, I, I think the aging was done very nicely. Well, this is a really handsome guy in the left hand. Uh, no, I'm, I'm joking, joking. <laughs> uh, uh, this is well. This is this year harvest. Uh, Willy is the guy who is doing the the pumping over the remontage. For me, the, at the beginning of the of, of each year, uh, this was the second tank fill. It's very important to see how you do the extraction. How is how easy is to make the extraction? Uh, year after year, the things change a little bit. So. You have to try to adapt yourself uh, depending how, uh, how how is the vintage and you use all your sense, the eyes, the smell, the taste, even the, 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 the hands when you touch the, the skins. So you need every all your sense to, to know, to try to adapt, to interpret your, your vintage. Well, and what, what is next? Well, here, like in all the projects, uh, we are working for the future, also for native yeast. Uh, I, I, here in the case of Pintia, last year uh, we started working with native yeast. This year, I think we are going to try to do 100% of native yeast, depending uh, the study of the university. And it's uh, something that we are already there. Uh, we are also working very hard uh, with uh, the Cooper, uh, with my master Cooper, Jose Enrique, to, to, to produce a French barrel in our Cooper with a specific toast for Pintia that for the moment we didn't, we didn't arrive. And we are also thinking, uh, well, we are also working, uh, aging some part of the wine in, 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 in this big batch. Uh, but in the future, I would like to have more concrete like they, you, they do in, in, in Chateauneuf de Pat. But for the moment, I don't have, play, I, I don't have place enough for, to do it. But in the future, we, part of the wine will be aged in, in concrete. So that's the future. That's what we are studying and what we are trying to improve. My question to you is, what makes Pintia different from a traditional Toro style of wine? Well, uh, I think in 2001, 2002, and 2003, until maybe 2006, we used to produce more traditional, pink, more traditional wines. They were more full body wines with more texture, with more uh, texture that you could eat the wines instead of drinking it. But I think Javier Ausas start to do the changing of style in maybe in 2008, where he started to do more elegant wines. And, and I think one of the things that helped him quite a lot was to, to use American oak uh, and to, be, to round the Istanicity. I think all the producers there, we try to produce wines that you can feel Toro, but in an elegant wine. Uh, maybe you know the wines from Sierra de Cantabria, Alabaster, or Vitorino, they are doing very well. Numante is coming back to this type of style. Uh, there's a French guy that do, he's doing a great wine. So at the beginning, the people look for pushing power, for pushing and taking um, a lot of extraction, a lot of wood, and a lot of texture. But at the end, you can drink just one glass of this wine. You cannot drink, and maybe they were wines that they were really well known or marked by Parker, Mr. Parker. But uh, now, people prefer to produce more, more elegant wines. And I think all the producers are, are going this way. I think we are, we do every year blind testing and I think um, Pinte is a good example of a elegant Toro wine. Uh, Sergio, I, I answer you? Absolutely, thank you. 